So here we are, a small group of six or seven of us in our minibus going to see two chateaux this morning. Our first one is Eze Le Rideau, described by Balzac as a faceted diamond set in a lake. Construction started around 1518 and was apparently influenced by Italian design. This staircase is said to be one of the main features of the chateau and was innovative in that it was straight rather than circular. And here are some interesting views of the interior. The chateau is considered to be one of the loveliest in the Loire and it really is set in a nice setting with gardens and lawns around and on a sunny day like today it really was a pleasure to be outside walking around even with a dodgy knee Villandry is the second chateau this morning and Villandry is very famous for its gardens now I'm sure the inside of the chateau is very interesting but what with the stairs and everything in my knee I decided not to go inside in any case my nephew works for the National Trust in the garden area and I am therefore going to do a full inventory of the gardens to show him I hope you like looking at gardens Whilst you're enjoying looking at these lovely gardens, let me get back to that matter of the breakup of Charlemagne's empire. That happened in the early 800s if you remember. Another element in the mix was our old friends the Normans. They had been settling in what we now call Normandy for several years and were seeking to expand their domain. In eight 50 they laid waste to the whole Loire Valley in their inimitable way. When in 1066 their current chief bully boy William the Bastard took over the English throne they extended their territory as far north as roughly Hadrian's Wall. In 1128 Geoffrey Plantagenet, Duke of Anjou married Matilda, the daughter of Henry I of England. Their son then succeeded to the English throne as Henry II. When Henry II married Eleanor of Aquitaine, his domains extended right down to the Pyrenees. And so, the biggest contender in the battle about who owned and ruled France became the English. This led inevitably to the so-called Hundred Years War between England and France which started officially in 1337 and of course to Joan of Arc. We may see her again. These gardens that Villandry certainly in my opinion live up to their reputation and must take an awful lot of staff to maintain. We're looking here believe it or not at the vegetable garden. We've just time now for a quick look in the fish pond. There'll be plenty of fish there and a look at the shop and then it's back to the minibus and back to uh, tour. I then find that I can catch a local bus and take a trip about 40 odd kilometers to the southeast and spend the afternoon in Loche. This is described as a quiet relatively untouristy place so we should be okay. I am also told that its walled citadel is by far the most impressive of the Loire Valley fortresses and we can see its unbreached ramparts and the renaissance houses below and on those walls a plaque commemorating the 500th anniversary of St. John's death as you will see there are many houses some of them in fact most of them I think still occupied inside the walls of the fortress 
The chateau remained in the hands of the Counts of Anjou until 1194, when John Lackland, for some unexplained reason, gave it to the King of France. His brother, Richard the Lionheart, took it back the following year in a surprise attack. Two more practice runs for the Hundred Years' War. This is where Joan of Arc persuaded the vacillating Dauphin to travel to Reims and be crowned King of France as Charles VII. We're back outside the fortress now and walking round the outside of the walls until we come to this other gate and can see a normal street inside there with normal houses. Incidentally, the King of France took it back from Richard the Lionheart ten years later, whereupon it became a royal residence. So we're just making our way back down here to the present day town. We've just time for a coffee now and then we'll make our way back down towards the railway station where we catch the bus back to Tour. Now we've had a fairly steady day today. The knee is not too bad and perhaps we'll be able to manage a full day tomorrow starting off at Orléans. Perhaps as we drive back and we see so much road surface, you might keep your eyes open to see if you can see any signs of a pothole or even a crack in the road or some litter or whatever. We're back in tour now but you can still keep your eyes open for some fault in the street or the road or some litter. Now, we're coming into the main square now and you should be able to recognise by now where we are. This is the entrance to the Vinci car park where I suspect they started. Another effortless trip on France's wonderful public transport system. 